Hello, hello everybody. Welcome on in to this evening for a special pre-event kickoff event anticipating our grand weekend two-day event called the Vintage and Thrifted DIY Marathon Fall Special. My name is Tracy Campbell. My page is My Sweet Home Living. I'm so excited that you are here or watching on the replay. I hope that you are as excited about this weekend's event as many of us creators are to be joining you and giving you ideas. I hope that you're as excited to join us this weekend. So hop on in here this evening. I can't wait to see who all's here. And even on the replay, please make sure you all let me know where you're tuning in from. And uh, so I can give you a hello later on down below. Leave a little note, or if you're watching this later, also let me know where you're tuning in from as well. Hello, hello, Miss Sherry, it's Stephanie. Listen, you all are a little bit farther away from me than normal, so I'm gonna try to squint my eyes and see the comments this evening, but we have a big project tonight planned, and I wanna make sure that you, we're not gonna be able to see it probably from top to bottom, but I'm gonna show you in pieces how we're gonna put something really cool together. While we're waiting for some of our friends to hop on in here, I want to uh, just welcome all of you in this evening. I'm hoping that we have some show up. I'm never live on a Friday night, so this is very out of the norm here at My Sweet Home Living, but I uh, couldn't pass up the opportunity to welcome you all and invite you to this weekend's two-day Vintage and Thrifted DIY Marathon. We have 49 creators, you guys, ready to just knock it out of the park. Every 30 minutes, a new project will be heading your way. If you love things that are vintage, if you love things that are vintage inspired, maybe they're replications of something vintage or using vintage items in some way to decorate your home or thrifted items that you may find, garage sales, uh, thrift stores, Goodwill, things like that, places like that. <coughs> Excuse me, I had a frog catch in my throat. Um, you will absolutely love this weekend. The creators that we have in this event are so excited with their projects and I know you are like so excited to see them. I'm so excited, so, so excited. Hello, if you're new to my page, welcome. Let me know that you're new and where you're coming in from and tuning, what part of the world you're from. And uh, if you're new to my page, you must know <laughs> that I love all things vintage, rustic, natural, and even primitive. And we've been on a really big primitive kick lately and lots of you have been letting me know that you have been absolutely loving everything that we've had um, coming at you lately. So I'm gonna show you a real quick project that we did on Thursday. We repurposed a piece of trash, a piece of garbage, <laughs> an empty Starbucks bottle, you guys. If you have these lying around and you pitch them, oh boy, hang on to them. We turned them into something absolutely adorable. Let me turn it around this way. A little milk can, and we fit it in with our little chicken uh, bas our egg basket, and uh, with a little bit of eggs and a little bit of uh, grain sack, some faux eggs, by the way. Everything here is faux. <laughs> fake. <laughs> but uh, if you love this kind of decorating, then this is a place for you. I would love it if you would follow my page before you leave me this evening. And um, I'm excited that all the presenters that you are going to see this weekend, if you love this kind of style, you're going to want to follow every single one of them before you leave them this weekend. It's two days, you guys. We start the, tomorrow morning, it's bright and early, 7 a.m. all the way up till 10 p.m. Central Time tomorrow night. And then day two starts on Sunday at 11.30 a.m. and lasting all the way up until 10 p.m. Sunday night. So you will just hunker in, get comfy for the weekend, and enjoy the event. All 49 presentations will be available in the Vintage and Thrifted Facebook group. I have it linked in my video description. If you uh, want to catch the event, then you'll want to make sure you catch that link <laughs> and join us over there all weekend long. So, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? New from Southern Indiana, Diana, welcome. You're not far from where I am. I'm near Owensboro, which is just right across the river from Evansville, Indiana, just about uh, across the river. Uh, but I'm so excited that you are here. So, if you've been following me for any amount of time, for the last month or two, we've had lots of new friends come on, but I have been using something called a coffee grunge mix on so many of my projects because if something is new, I like to make it look old. I like to make it look like it has lots of character and it has a story to tell. 
If it's not old, I make it look old. <laughs> and I do that by lots of different techniques, but what we've been using really a lot lately is our coffee grunge mix. I've had so many of you all message me, what is your coffee grunge mix recipe? How can I make it? And I have responded back to most of you, I think. Uh, but just in case, I thought it would be great to just create um, a special edition of our coffee grunge mix before we get into tonight's project. Uh, so I have just a old uh, Alfredo sauce jar, I think it is, or spaghetti sauce jar, you could use whatever. Now mine is really hot because I'll tell you, you start with hot water. You start with about a cup, two cups if you want to make a bigger batch. I'm starting, I'm going to give you my recipe as I have it written and saved on my page and then you all can adjust it to your liking. You can double it, triple it, whatever you want to do. <laughs> but what I do is I put this jar under my Keurig, my coffee uh, maker, and I put it on a medium cup of coffee. Now this is like, a, I think this is a cup and a half. Um, but okay, so here, I'm just gonna, not even gonna tell you what I have in here, I'm gonna tell you what you'll wanna put in yours. A cup of hot water. <laughs> a cup of hot water. And then, you're going to need a half a cup of instant coffee crystals, grounds, whatever you wanna call them, okay? A half a cup of instant coffee cheap is perfect you don't want to have to spend too much I just grabbed this at the local grocery store <laughs> and you're gonna need a half of a cup okay um, if you use a cup of water you want a half of a cup of instant coffee now I have a little more than um, said measurements of water so I'm going in with a little bit more but if you're writing this recipe down one cup of hot water a half a cup of instant coffee and then you will need two tablespoons of cinnamon Whoop, wrong lid. <laughs> and two tablespoons of vanilla you can totally oh, um, leave those two ingredients out however if you leave one of them out I would say leave the vanilla but because the cinnamon really gives lots of good little crystals um, or not crystals but a good vintage look when you are uh, creating some projects you'll really see it come into play I don't know if we'll see it quite so much on tonight's but you might on a few other um, now I said two tablespoons of cinnamon <laughs> um, I didn't bring a measuring spoon to the craft table tonight and I sure do love my cinnamon <laughs> so we're dumping the cinnamon in. Hello, Chris Davis from Colorado. Welcome in tonight. So excited y'all are here. Hello, Miss Pamela. And hey, my Miss Frances from Vitamin Silk Designs. She is going to be one of our presenters this weekend. And about two tablespoons or so of vanilla. <laughs> eyeball it, you guys. Eyeball it. If you love it, you want to go all in. I'm making a, a, I'm probably doubling my batch, so I'm doing a little more than what I said. Does everything smell like cinnamon? Lori, you would be surprised. It doesn't, it doesn't have a very overpowering smell. Uh, the fragrance is really subtle. It, um, I don't really know how to explain it. It just, if you know what like coffee smells like, if you smell a, take a whiff of a cup of coffee, it's subtle. It's not overpowering. It doesn't like overwhelm your senses. That's kind of what this does. It's just really subtle and um, not overwhelming. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh oh, somebody's in as a mad face. I know that was an accident, surely. <laughs> Hello, Miss Sheila from Sweeties Creations and Decor. How are you, sweet friend? All right, so I'm just taking a butter knife and mixing this up. Doesn't have to be anything perfect, you guys. If you learn anything about primitive or rustic style or vintage style decorating, everything's just kind of on a whim. You know, nothing has to be mathematically or scientifically figured out. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna give it a good shake and it is super hot. Now, what do I do with this when I'm not using it? I store it in my refrigerator. After it cools, of course, you wanna put it in the refrigerator and keep it for, ever pull it out for the next project that you, when you get ready to use it. All right, so 
I was out. I used my last of my uh, batch of coffee grunge mix on my project, preparing for tonight's project. So I thought, well, let's just mix this up on a, on our episode tonight, and that way you guys can kind of see how easy it is. And um, it will get a little foamy at the top. That's okay. It'll go down. It's just because I gave it a real good shake, and it's trying to get all of those ingredients kind of dissolved and mixed together. Now, if you've never used this before, it can get kind of goopy. If you put it in the refrigerator, it gets cold. It'll get kind of thick and stringy. That's okay. That's okay. Heat it up in the microwave for just a little bit, warm it up, and give it a good shake, and it kind of reincorporates all of those ingredients. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate you. Uh, hello, Miss Judy and Patsy. Yes, you caught me live. <laughs> so excited you're here. Hello, Miss Rula. Um, and so if you warm it up, it helps it kind of redistribute all the ingredients. It will still kind of have a goopy texture to it, but that's what makes it cling to the surfaces that you choose to use it on. We use it on fabric. We've used it in our acrylic paint. We even also used it um, on our little vintage little milk jug or jar that we created last Thursday. Um, so you can really use it for lots of things. Well, tonight we're using it for something I haven't shown you to, how to use it on yet. <laughs> we're using it on wood, okay? Now, all of the presenters that you're gonna see in this weekend's event will either have an item that has been thrifted, okay, either from a garage sale, a thrift store, or, or it could be both, or something that is vintage, meaning it's older in age, uh, been well used, they may repurpose it or use it in a different way, or it could be something that they are creating and giving it a vintage style to, okay, like a replica of something, okay? So that's gonna be the theme of the whole weekend. Now, what I'm using tonight for my project is truly vintage. <laughs> and it has a little bit of a backstory, and I've used something of this nature before in one of my other projects earlier in the fall. I'm using some from the family farm, some vintage tobacco sticks, you guys. Tobacco sticks, okay? Now, the tobacco sticks are from my family farm. Now, my grandfather and my great-grandfather um, are were both um, farmers, okay? Um, and they, the main livelihood of their farm was cattle and raising tobacco. Now, tobacco's not quite as, um, you know, such a big crop or, or uh, crop producing crop here in Kentucky. I'll spit it out here in a second, as it used to be. However, it was the livelihood of many families here in Western Kentucky, many ages, you know, many years ago, up till probably about 10 years ago is really when it started to slack off. Now, so now, nowadays that not as many farmers are using these tobacco sticks, you will see, you can find them on Mar Facebook Marketplace. People will sell them by the bundles. But sometimes you may have a family barn that is chocked full of unused tobacco sticks that are sitting and collecting dust. If these tobacco sticks could talk, think of the story that they could tell you guys. These tobacco sticks have been around for years and years, and I'm talking back to the days of my great-grandfather, okay? Now, my grandfather, my grandfather is in his 90s. He was uh, the main worker in his family um, because he was the only boy in the family after my grand great-grandfather. And so he was responsible for, for lots of the um, tobacco harvesting. So I know that these tobacco sticks have been in his hands um, and lots of the workers that have been uh, on, on the family farm, they've been in, his, in their hands, and has also helped produce and build a, a generation of families on our farm. So these tobacco sticks were not only strong in structure, but had a, a strong story and a strong history behind them. These tobacco sticks, a lot of them were so strong that they have lasted uh, probably a hundred of years if they've been preserved and well kept. They were meant to be strong because these sticks, probably maybe five foot, probably five, four and a half to five foot tall, long, however you want to say it, they had to be strong enough to hold at least five or six stalks of heavy tobacco, you guys. If you've never picked up a stalk of tobacco, <laughs> they're heavy, <laughs> they're heavy, especially when they're freshly cut because all that moisture is still in them. 
Uh, and then they take these and they hang them in the rafters in the barn and let them dry, okay? So you can imagine how strong these tobacco sticks must have had to be in order to carry all of that weight, you guys. So they do, they last. And so if you can get your hands on some of these, especially if they've been um, housed on your family farm in some way or somehow connected to your family, grab them up. You can create some really cute projects out of these. Tonight, we are creating a primitive style tobacco stick tree. <laughs> tobacco stick tree to be used all year long. So if you're like me, I love the look of Christmas trees, but I don't like necessarily, I mean, if, I don't know, dust collects on them so bad and I, I it, they're hard to clean. Okay, let's just say that. <laughs> they're hard to clean. So I'm copy of this Facebook. No way, we gotta stay live. <laughs> Um, yes, that's right. You can use them to decorate all kinds of things. Um, so I forgot where I was going with this, but anyway, we'll get back to it. I'm sure I'll remember where I was, but what I have done, I'm going to create this tree that I can use and decorate all year long throughout the seasons. And it's not going to have a lot of greenery on it to collect a lot of dust. So I think it's uh, a little more friendlier for um, your home, if cleaning wise, if you want to keep it up all year long. Okay, this would even be cute, really cute on a covered porch as well. Hello, Miss Kim from Yesterday's Tomorrow's. How are you? Hey, Miss Mara and Miss Angie from the Honeysuckle Haven. I'm so excited y'all are here. Thank you for the stars too, by the way. All right, so to create this tobacco stick tree, you guys, you're going to need three full size tobacco sticks <laughs> and then you're going to need three uh, you can take and actually you will need four tobacco sticks in all uh, three of them kept in full size okay and then one of them you're going to cut it down into three sections okay now like I said nothing about this is scientifically mathematically uh, correct because as you can see <laughs> I have cut this one tobacco stick I couldn't find my tape measure anywhere today. Go figure. So you can see I didn't cut my tobacco stick even. That's okay. We're going to get away with it. <laughs> We're going to make it work. So what I have done with this, you guys, I've rinsed them, sprayed them off because, of course, they were covered with barn dust. You know, barn dirt. <laughs> and I've sprayed them off, let them air dry. And then what I did is I took some of my coffee grunge mix. I poured it in a little bowl. And then what I did is I recoated not recoded. I coated. Let me see which one. I don't even know which one I'm. I left one side. Okay, this is the side I left uh, bare. All of the other sides, all I've done is taken that coffee grunge mix and I coated these tobacco sticks with a layer of this coffee grunge mix. Now, it looks dark at first, but because it's wet. Okay, now you could totally put a stain on these if you want. It's not necessary if you want the real effect. Um, I like to keep it natural and rustic, so I'm not going to worry about it. I've coated all of my tobacco sticks with this coffee grunge mix, but I wanted to save one side to show you. Just a quick brush on. You can wipe some of it off if you want, but these tobacco sticks are pretty dry, so it's going to soak it up beautifully. It's going to soak it up. And then you're going to be left with this cinnamon vanilla coffee mix smell. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I got a little bit on my nose, <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. How are you, Miss Teresa? Yes, tobacco stick stars are another really popular thing uh, using these. So here's how I'm going to start this project, you guys. These three tobacco sticks that are full size, they are not all the same length, okay? So I'm going to scoot over and I'm going to put these right here beside uh, so you guys can see these a little bit. I'm going to work with the top of these first. You can see I have these all three standing side by side. They're all three a little bit different in height. I'm okay with it. I could cut them all off at the same height, but I'm not going to worry about it. Not going to worry about it at all. I'm going to take some twine and what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of separate these out into like a little teepee set, uh, shape. All right. Um, and in fact, this longer, um, tobacco stick is actually going to come in handy here in just a little bit when we get ready to do something else. All right. Um, so you let me see how about that we'll do this. I'm thinking about what would be the right method to go about this <laughs> process wise. This is the first time I've made this you guys. <laughs> Hello Miss Leanne from Dita's Crafts and Creations. How are you? Hello Miss Yvonne from Southern Designs and Finds. Miss Cheryl from MNC Treasures. Oh my gosh we've got lots of you guys on tonight. I'm so excited y'all are here. Um, so here's what I've got. 
I'm gonna kind of spread them out in a TP shape, you guys. We're going, we're going big tonight. Go big or go home. <laughs> That's our motto tonight. So what we're gonna do is kind of evenly space these out at the bottom. Okay, you see where I've got this going? And then at the top, I know you guys can't see the top right this moment, but that's okay. At the top, I'm gonna twist it together and we will have a little teepee shape. So here's what I think I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna pull out the power tools. We're gonna pull out the power tools tonight. <laughs> hey, Miss Cheryl, uh, Cheryl and Rose, how are you? Love all, thank you so much. All right, so here's what I think we'll do. I think these three little sections that I have already kind of pre-cut, I'm going to take them, um, I, I really kind of walking through this in my head, you guys. You may see me take this apart <laughs> and reassemble several times. I know what I gotta do. I gotta put the top together first, you guys, because then I'm not gonna know exactly where my bottom um, pieces are gonna go. That's what I gotta do. That's what I gotta do. So here we go. Let's take this and let's spread it out. I almost need like a fourth hand. Anybody wanna come over and be a fourth hand over here? <laughs> hey, Miss Jackie, how are you? Miss Dara, how are you? Miss Dara from Lattice and Lace is gonna be in our event this weekend as well. All right. I'm just kinda eyeballing it, you guys. Nothing particular. I know you kinda can't see that real quick. Here's what I'm gonna do. Just to hold that together. I got a piece of uh, cheesecloth right here. <laughs> I'm gonna just give that a quick tie for just a minute and that's gonna hold it there. That's gonna be like my fourth hand. All right, I kinda wanna temporary hold right th there. Ooh, scared me, I thought it was falling over. <laughs> All right, so then what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of twine and we're just gonna kinda wrap it. I'm gonna get it started with a little bit of hot glue up here at the top on the back. I know you can't see that, but once I get it wrapped around a couple of times it'll hold it together for us and then we'll be able to kind of go on to the next step at the bottom uh oh I didn't have my hot glue smashed down hot enough or tight enough rather there we go all right so nothing about this project is gonna be super hard um, but it will take a little bit of patience it will take a little bit of patience to get it all put together <laughs> I'll promise you that all right, so I'm going to take about, I don't know, six or seven passes around the top and make sure that I pull it tight around the top. Now, I'm not too worried about what it looks like aesthetically at the top just yet because we're going to embellish that. We're going to dress it up and really give it a good primitive look here in just a little bit. Um, and my bottom pieces right now are still adjustable, so I'm not locked into anything not committed yet you guys <laughs> so that's the good thing all right so let's see let's cut this off we can always add more later if we need to so let's cut that off and um we'll tighten this down tighten it down and give a little bit of hot glue to secure it and like i said i'm not worried too much about what it looks like aesthetically yet doesn't have to be pretty yet we got to get the bones. Got to get the bones there first. All right, let me hold that down real quick while that dries. I do want to make sure that stays on really nice. Spread that hot glue across there. All right, now, here we go. I'm going to raise this up to where you guys can watch me put together the bottom pieces. But before I do that, let me grab my um, drill. And I have some wood screws. The wood screws... Now you could totally use um, E6000 if you want to, but I'm just saying, might be kind of hard. <laughs> Unless you have some clamps or something to hold it together while it dries, it might be kind of difficult to do that. All right, so let me slide things to the side here. In preparation to clear off our surface here. I don't need that jar anymore. All right, wood screws have to be long enough to go through my tobacco stick and into the surface of the other stick. So you wanna make sure that your wood screws are long enough to do that, okay? There's my wood screw, there's the end, it's gonna go in, and it's gonna have that much that it's gonna go into the other piece, all right? Don't ask me what size those are, I have no idea. I don't even know if the box I have is correct. Uh, these are, 
Yeah, it, it just depends on whatever size your tobacco sticks are, honestly, because some of them are thinner than others. Okay, so here we go. And you know what? I see that I left the bottom of this stick right here <laughs> untouched without my uh, coffee grunge. So I gotta, I was thought, I'll show them what it looks like without that coffee grunge. I don't know if you can see that right there. On the bottom of this stick right here, you might have to swipe your comments, but you can see where um, I left that bare because these tobacco sticks, like I said, were super dry. And that coffee grunge mix just soaked right up and that just, it was almost like it just needed a good drink. So I just gave it a good drink of coffee mixture. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, yep. It's, it smells good enough that you could definitely do that. All right, so I need to make sure. Now I'm looking up because I'm looking up at the top of my little uh, TP shape here. I need to make sure that I've spread this out evenly. Now, if you have something that is circular shape, big enough, like um, like a wood round, this would be the perfect time to use that, honestly, because it would help you space it out. And in fact, y'all are gonna laugh at me. I have a wood wood round door hanger <laughs> um, that my sister gifted me for Christmas. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna lay that wood round right here on my table, you guys. And I'm not gonna attach it to it, but I'm gonna use it as a guide to make sure that I have my sticks evenly spaced. See how easy that is? So that lets me know that I've got them about right, even. You know what I mean? So I've just used that wood round, that circle, as my guide, okay? Now, what I can do next is I can take these little uh, cut pieces. This was one of the tobacco sticks that we cut into three pieces. And I'm gonna eyeball it and see. I've already pre-cut these, but I'm looking at my, my shape here. I'm going up. Let me scoot this over to where you guys can see it just a little bit more. Oh, oh, wrong way, this way. <laughs> there we go, and I'm back here somewhere. <laughs> so take this at this piece that I did not measure, you guys. No measuring uh, was done in today's project. Just, you know, there you go. Is there a proper way, probably a better way to do this? Absolutely. <laughs> Am I gonna give you the perfect way to do this? No, I'm not, um, but you can do it any way it works best for you. Now you can put these on the outside, I probably would put it on the outside, honestly. Um, so I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna do it on this side because I can see on this side a little better. Um, let me get one started and then I'll rotate it. I'm gonna take my wood screws. I did not pre-drill my holes like I should have, you guys. I need to pre-drill some holes because that'll hold my screw a little bit better, you guys. So hang tight. Um, it takes just a little bit of prep work. So I need a drill. Um, I need a bit that's a little bit smaller than my screw. And what I'm gonna do on my stick, the ends of my sticks right about, uh, about a half inch, quarter inch in, I'm gonna drill a little hole because that's gonna be um, the little guide for where I want my screw to go down into. And that will also help prevent my sticks from splitting when I get ready to um, place the screw in them, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do all three of these really quick, super quick. Just do it and get it done, and then you don't have to worry about it. And then we'll be ready to put our screws in. And then we get to do the fun part. We get to decorate. <laughs> That's the fun part. Love that part. All right, so now I gotta do the other ends of them. Okay. Turn these around and do this end. Try to be careful. I don't wanna go all the way through them because I don't wanna get to my wood round down here that I'm just using as a guide. Nothing is being attached to my my door hanger down here. <laughs> I'm just using this circle as a guide. If you're just tuning in and you're thinking, what in the world is she doing? <laughs> it just helps to have a circular shape at the bottom to kind of measure out um, and make sure you get your tobacco sticks spaced evenly. So that's what I'm using it for. All right. This screw is a little messed up. Let's get a different one. Where did my little box go? Um, I have a little messed up spot on 
the um, on the threads. I couldn't think of the word I was needing to use. <laughs> All right, so on the back, on this side right here, because because I can see it, I'm going to take this and I'm going to drill one of these screws in, and then I will be sure to turn it around so you guys can see it here in just a minute. I'm making sure that it's going to meet on both sides of my tree form here. Now, woo hold on here. This is where that fourth hand would come in real handy. <laughs> real handy. All right. Good deal. We went all the way through and was able to get in, make contact with that back piece. Oh, rats, you know what I did? All right, here we go. Now, we'll get this one in and then I'll turn it around and let you guys see it. You know, honestly, I probably should have a little level here to see if I've got that level, but who, 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 who. I mean, why should we get scientific and mathematical about this at this point, right? <laughs> no. We're, we're going to have fun. Last time I checked, math and science were not on my fun list, you guys. All right, I got a little bit of gap there because it's not, wasn't holding it as tight as I needed to. But I'll go back and tighten that up after the live tonight. So, let me show you. I'm spinning this around. So here's what we got right now. I'm just doing this along the bottom. You're gonna need three of these little short pieces, you guys, to do this. All right, so we're gonna do this on this side as well. Now this tobacco stick, are they any way, shape, or form perfect? <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. So it can make things a little wonky. That's why I said don't get too hung up in being um, perfect about this project because here's the here's the really reality of it you're going to be decorating this and honestly any imperfections that you have along the way you can cover up beautifully um, just with a few little um, embellishments you guys so no fretting <laughs> no fretting whatsoever all right so let me get this drilled on and then we'll, we will move right along. I don't know if I can do this with my left hand. Let me get this started. Nope, can't do it. <laughs> Let's spin it around. This is what, this is when a turntable would be nice and handy, right? Yep, I believe so. All right. Yep, that one's going to fit right there perfect. So let me get my screw started, and then I can put it right up there. I can put it right up there and put it right on to the tall piece. All right, remember, like I said, nothing is measured. <laughs> nothing. Woohoo! Although I don't want to put my eye out. I might have to lay this down, you guys. That's a, that's a little challenging. Here we go. I'm going to hold on to this really tight. Yeah, there we go. Got to resituate. Hold on. Hold my nose just right. Twitch my ear just right. <laughs> All the things. Here we go. Let's do it this way. Back it up. It's going in a little too close to the edge, so hold tight. We're going to redirect it. We're going to do it this way for a second because I can hold it a little better. All right, going in. Uh oh. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. That may have been why I was struggling a little bit. It, my, my drill is dead. Okay. All right. So, anyway, you would go all the way around <laughs> and attach these around the bottom. All right? 
I will have to do that after tonight's live. But we can keep going because nothing is going to prevent us from um, getting that attached. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of hot glue and I'm just going to attach it to my wood as is with this hot glue right now. And then I can go back afterwards and put in my screws. So let's see if the hot glue will give us a little bit of a temporary hold. That would be marvelous. <laughs> um, I don't think we see tobacco sticks often in New Jersey. They're apparently vintage. Yes, you're right. You're right, Peggy. You're absolutely right. Um, I think it was probably more of a southern type sharecropping type um, project or um, crop. I don't think. I, I don't know for sure, but I don't think it was much um, in the Northeast. I could totally be wrong about that. I don't honestly know the history about that. Um, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm assuming. All right. So since my drill is dead, my battery is dead. I need to back out this screw for now. I think our hot glue is going to give us a temporary hold. And then I'll just go in and just put the screws in later after I recharge my battery. Okay. There we go. All right. So let's put a little bit of hot glue on this one and we'll put this side and then we'll just keep on going and get this little tree decorated here, you guys. All right, now, here's the thing. Like I said, nothing about this is, is gonna be perfect. So this stick is a little bit shorter than the rest. That's okay, we can make it work. All right, put some a good amount of hot glue so it can grab it real good for now and then we'll move on all right gonna let that sit for just a second while it cools and sets i'm gonna pull off my hot string hot glue strings and then we get to move on to the fun part we get to move on to the fun part i'm gonna put a good dosing of hot glue right down in there because like I said, this is gonna be covered up and you're not ever gonna see that. Not ever gonna see it. <laughs> Unless you have a naked tree. <laughs> and we're not planning on having that. <laughs> All right, okay, so let's take the glue. Ah, I didn't let it hold for a second. Get it back on there quick. It wasn't dry yet. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to show you how to start it with a base of decor, okay? And then how you can change it out for the seasons, just using a few simple things. And of course, we have to add twinkle lights. Um, tons, of, oh, uh, missing some comments. There's tons of tobacco sticks in Lancaster. Or maybe, maybe, maybe that's what I'm seeing. Uh, thank you all for the stars. I appreciate you so much. I know, I should have had clamps, but like I said, I had intentions on doing my, my drill. <laughs> yeah, my drill just laughed at me and said, ha ha, no such luck with you tonight. Um, and I even crossed my mind, I thought, mm, I wonder when the last time that battery was charged on that drill. <laughs> didn't even, didn't even think it was close to being uh, out of it. Okay. Now, if worse comes to worse, we can take a little bit of cheesecloth and just um, tie that right up. I think, I think we're good. I am not gonna move it very much though, you guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna move it a whole lot. I am gonna pick it up and I'm gonna take this wood round out from the bottom because we don't need that anymore. So let's slide that right out. And then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use for the base of this. Now this actually is just the base, honestly, but the base of the decorating part of it. We are gonna use, it. okay, I have several of them, I think I have three of them. I don't know how many we're gonna need. Um, I grabbed these at Joann's today, actually, and they're just called a grapevine twig garland. If you really wanna get, um, you know, handy and use something you have, you can use, uh, a grapevine wreath that you already have to take it apart um, and soak it in a, in a bathtub of warm water first and that kind of makes it more pliable. Um, I have done that before and in fact, 
Ah, oh, sheesh, we're back. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, okay, I'm glad it worked and it came back. I'm so worried that we had lost you guys. Whew, okay. Now, this little bundle is wrapped with a wire, so I'm trying to get this wire out first. Okay, let's just snip it right here. It's really thin, so I think we can snip it just fine with some scissors. Um, but this is going to be really perfect. I'm keeping this kind of a simple design. I don't want anything overly complicated um, because... Primitive is a little more simple sometimes. Um, and that way I can change it out for the seasons as well. I'm so glad we're back. <laughs> I'm so glad we're back. I was so worried I'd lost you guys. It froze up on me and I was kept waiting and waiting. I thought, oh no, oh no. <laughs> but it worked. Okay, so I've taken this apart. Okay, so here's, the, here's what the tag says. Uh, if you want to take a screenshot of that, that's what they have at... Joann's, okay. Um, I grabbed, I think I grabbed three of these, but I don't know if we're gonna use all three of them. I've just, it, it's wired together. See that little wire in the top right corner? Um, it's wired together. Uh, I've unwrapped it, and we're gonna use that to put around the tree. Now, I'm not gonna go all the way to the bottom, I don't think. I don't think, but I am gonna use a little bit of the wire to secure this on after, um, after I can see if I like the placement. I don't know how thick, I'm gonna have to stand up. I don't know how thick I want it. The microphone cord is <laughs> caught on stuff over there. Um, and I don't know if I'm gonna use more than one of these, so we'll see. Now you could totally, if you want it kind of curly, you could kind of let it twine and do its own thing. Now I'm gonna have to probably scoot this back. Let's scoot this back right here. How about that? Might have to scoot my tape. Let's do a little bit of resituating. <laughs> a little bit of resituating, you guys. Okay, here we go. That might, that'll work perfect. All right, so let's do this. And this is gonna be our base for any kind of decor we wanna put on it. So I'm trying to think how thick or thin do I want this? This is pretty thin already. I mean, it's there's not a lot of, it's not real substantial, I guess I should say. So I could go around this with two of these and just see what it does. It's perfect because see, as it gets to the top, it gets smaller at the top of as well. Oh, that's worked pretty perfect, you guys. I couldn't probably ask for it to happen any better. But you know what, I think I am gonna put I think I'm going to put one more on there because I kind of want it. Um, I want it to be a little woodsy, um, but I still want it to have that primitive feel. But I like this because this will give us um, a little bit of something, something to hang things on. You can still see me or not. <laughs> ah, we're back, we're back. I, I know it keeps freezing. I'm not going anywhere, you guys. If I freeze, if I'm kicked off, I'll come right back, I promise. <laughs> so I'm not going anywhere until this is done. <laughs> No way! Facebook's not going to get rid of me that easy. All right, so let's start with the second one. And I'm just going to kind of see if I can wrap this around in between the others. If it's not perfect, okay, too. That's okay, too. This is going to be so pretty. Now, what can you use if you can't get your hands on tobacco sticks, you guys? You can totally use some garden stakes. I know that I know that I, my local Dollar General had some really cute garden stakes. Well, I don't say cute, but they were really inexpensive little wooden garden stakes. Okay, and reminded me a lot of tobacco sticks. They would be perfect. You could uh, stake and use them in the same way. Ah, we're back! We're back! We're back! <laughs> Hello, hello, hey Miss Jennifer, hey Miss Terry, we're back. I'm not going anywhere, you guys. If I freeze, y'all just hang tight. I'm coming right back. I'm not going anywhere, I promise. All right, real quick, before we move on to the next section, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this, because you know I have to have a base of lights. I have to, we're hanging out 
and I'm grabbing some stuff over here while we're connecting. <laughs> I'm all over the place, you guys, so hang on. Facebook's sending us everywhere to outer space. All right, I'm using these little rice lights, okay, before I was so rudely disconnected again for the about the 20th time. <laughs> I'm using these little rice lights. Um, and here's what they look like up close. I haven't been able to give you all like an up close view of those. Look at those. Aren't they cute? They're a little tiny. Now, I like them because they give them a little bit softer of a glow versus a regular Christmas light strand, okay? So, I'm gonna plug these in. I'm gonna unplug my glue gun. And this is gonna kinda be my base of lights. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is on a brown uh, wire. So, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna strand it around um, I, you can tr wrap this around that grapevine, honestly, and it's going to just blend right in with that grapevine beautifully. Um, now this is a little bit of a short strand. So there's strand number one. Where'd my strand number two go? Over here. We're going to have no shortage of lights on this, you guys. No shortage of lights. Okay, this one is tangled up in my microphone cord. And we're just going to keep adding layer after layer after layer. Hey, Miss Teresa, how are you? Thank you for hopping on. And all of our Facebook reconnection issues, you guys. It's been a doozy. That's all right. We're not going anywhere. They're not going to get rid of us that easy. All right. Wrapping this around, finishing it at the top, and then we're gonna have more light, so I'm not too worried about if it's evenly spaced, honestly. I'm gonna put this little plug in up here because since I have this up here in this chair, it can get a little challenging and I want to pull it off. All right, now, here's what I'm gonna do as well. This, as a base, is perfect. Now, I can layer over top of this. I'm gonna use, ignore the green light strand that's in there. This is one of my favorite greeneries from Hobby Lobby. Um, it's a garland, and right now, let's see, do I have it doubled? No, I don't have it doubled. Okay, so this is the single thickness of it, but you can double it and make it thicker if you want. This is going to be kind of the perfect um, size that I can start at the top, and if, um, probably what I would do is add a little bit of a wire. Let me get a little wire, and I'm going to twist this around the top and secure it at the top and then we will just twine it around these old tobacco sticks you guys and that will give us another little good base to house all of our seasonal decorations on green goes with any season you guys if you're ever wanting to know like a good color a good base color to um add i think green i don't think you can ever go wrong with the color green i love using green in my outdoor spaces because of that exact reason because i know green mingles and goes well with every season so i don't ever have to worry about changing it out all right now i'm looking to see which way my grapevine is going because i kind of want this to go in the same direction and i do kind of have to space it out Hold on. I kind of have to space it out and twirl it around so that it goes from the top to the bottom. It's going to be just a little spare, a little sparse. And that's okay. Because we're going to add more things to this. And then we'll plug this light strand in. And this will be an extra different size of light to give us a little bit different of a look. Okay, now I have more of that greenery, so I could honestly add a little bit more to go around at the bottom, but I think we're fine. All right, however, my light strand is finished on that side, so we're going to tuck it through to the back of the tree, and we're going to plug it in. Yes, yes, yes! Isn't that looking good so far? Now, on the top is a little bare right here. I'm going to have to take 
take a little piece of wire. Let's take a little piece of that wire and loop that around because we want it, this to hold tight right here. So if you see something like I just saw, like a little empty spot, you can twist that wire around there and keep it into place. Okay. Now, I need more greenery down here, and I'll add more greenery to that in a little bit. But you can see from different sides and different angles, you're going to have a little bit different look. Okay. We're going to keep on adding. I have, I have this little pipberry strand from Joann's that I love. It's already looking pretty woodsy, isn't it? Isn't that cute? Um, let me get these cords out of the way. I probably need to run the cords down the center of the tree. That's exactly what I need to do. And that way, all the cords, none of the cords will be hanging out from around the tree. That's what I need to do, you guys. All right. In fact, you know what I'm going to do before I add that? Because I know this is going to be something seasonal that I'm going to take on and off. I'm going to wait. I'm going to leave that for the very top. I know that I want to keep some cheesecloth. What I have done is I've taken a package of cheesecloth, you guys. All I did was put it in a pot of some hot water this afternoon and um, soaked it and then let it dry. So I'm going to use this as another base, another base of decoration that I can add to for the seasonal part of it hard to see it. I'm going to cut this big piece in half because I know it'll go a lot further if I cut it in half. So <laughs> hang with me for a second. I'm going to show you. Okay. All right. Cut that off. Now it's, it's a little bit thinner and it's real wispy. So I am going to make sure that it's not bundled up because I like that wispiness to it. So let's add this in between the green areas. Okay. So like right up here, right there, and this will cling to that grapevine. You probably won't even have to secure it very much, honestly, you guys. It will cling to that grapevine perfect. I'm going to make sure that it is separated a little bit because that's also going to kind of visually fill in some of those empty areas. All right. Let me re adjust this a little bit there we go now how pretty would this be to hang some vintage family photos on with some little clothes pins yes i love that idea now i'm looking at it from your all's angle um i want to add some more around here at the bottom and i'm even okay if it drapes off and kind of has a little skirting effect to it I like that too. Ooh, where's my other arm? <laughs> All right, so we're pulling that through. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so that's just giving us a little good little base. Now we'll come in with the seasonal things, okay? So this little primitive looking little pit berry garland I think is adorable. It has some little pumpkins on it, um, some little pine cones, some little fall colored leaves. If you see something that's not quite your color scheme, if it's a little bright and a little bold, some of these pumpkins are a little bright for me. What I would probably do, honestly, take a little bit of my vintage Distress Oxide and kind of just rub over those and kind of tone them down a little bit. Um, that's probably what I would do. Now I have, let's see, how many strands of these do I have? I know I have two. Okay, so I have two of these, so I can space these out so that I know I'll have an even coverage, hopefully. Hopefully, we'll see. And then you can keep this as simple as you want, or you can keep adding and keep adding. It's really up to the way that you like the look of it. I'm liking, I need to figure out a way to secure that with a little wire. Let's get a little wire. I could wrap it around, but then I'm going to lose that little berry. And I want those little berries to kind of, I want them to stick out. Give it a little bit of dimension when they do that. Um, where'd the wire go on the back side? 
There we go. Ah, can't reach in there. <laughs> All right. And then for the top in a little bit, I have a primitive metal star that I'm going to use for the top. And I think that'll look so cute. Let me unwrap this one. Thank you, Miss Penny from Remake It Pretty. You liking it? I just think this is so cool. And I think it's a little easier. It's not nearly as heavy as setting up a full-size tree, you guys. And to me, you can change it out and still have something decorated for the seasons without somebody saying, you have a Christmas tree up in your house? <laughs> no, I have a tobacco stick tree up in my house. <laughs> That's what I have. Um, the grapevines, uh, the grapevines, yes, I used two of those, and those were for hot, from uh, Joanne. Um, here is the tag of what these are called. They're called grapevine twig garlands. I know it's a little blurry. Grapevine twig garlands right there. My chubby fingers are in the way. There you go. Okay. And then these are the little garlands from Joanne. These are all on sale this weekend. They're having a big Labor Day sale this weekend and so I went in and I, I thought I snagged three of these honestly but for some reason I cannot find the third one right now you wait till I get off the live and then I'll find the third one <laughs> actually I see it I'll see it hang on oh I see my whole bag down here you guys I got more <laughs> I got more I've got another one of these so I could add to it if I wanted to oh yes I've got two more of these I love these things so if I don't use them all for this tree you could make a set of these trees honestly you can make a small medium and large one and use these or I could mix those in around my home to kind of tie in the same color schemes in different areas you know I'm all about doing that all about it I can see at the bottom I'm a little bare so I probably will take one of these and kind of um, cover up the base of this tree quite a bit okay let's see I'm going to kind of interlock these with a little twist and that'll keep my little garland from falling off oh i love these pip berries i love this orange you guys so all i would have to do to change this out for christmas change out the pip berries I'll ch all i would do is take these little fall uh, this fall strand off and put a christmas one on that's all i would have to do this is a little bear right here. I probably will go back. I know exactly what I'm going to do here in just a second. I'm going to get some more of that cheesecloth. And we're going to add to it. Let me untwist this. I can't find where it's twisted at. It all blends in together. Hey, Miss Denise. Hey, Miss Deanie. The tobacco sticks. Yes, they're from my grandfather and my great-grandfather's actual farm, you guys. These have been around for generations. They are vintage. <laughs> they are vintage. So, I mean, if you don't have tobacco sticks like this, you could totally use the same idea with, uh, I've seen some that are similar. They're created out of a, a tomato cage, but something about this with the um, wood on it, I just, I think is, is a little more my style. And then I just like the connection with family you know um, and then I think I really like that idea that I mentioned a second ago I think what I'm gonna do I could make this a family tree I really could um, I could use I've got some little uh, grunged clothespins um, and I think I could just clip some family photos onto this tree and make it a family tree I think that would be so cute um, yes they're pip berries now the pip berries are these little narrow berries. That's the pip berry. Now these are just some just random little berries. But I love these because they have lots of little goodies on them. Little pine cones, little pumpkins. There are lots of different little colors. You have like a red orange and a, a, a yellow golden orange. I love those. And these are perfect. These are perfect. They give you that woodsy, wispy thing, you know, feel to it. And pip berries are really popular with primitive decorating so I mean you can't go wrong with them I'm trying to see where I ended I ended back here so let me twist this around and I'll just start right back where I picked up I could go a little thicker with this now that I know I have a couple more <laughs> but I think we're good 
Alright. Actually, I think I'm going to twist it right back around here. Because we're a little bare right there. And then run that up. Oh, this is looking so cute. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we are solving the dilemma of having a fall tree that you don't have to take up and down. You don't have to clean a whole lot. It's not super heavy. Oh, this is solving so many problems. <laughs> for me anyway. I don't know about for you guys. But for me, for sure. So I'm going to take some more cheesecloth. I'm going to experiment with something, you guys. In some of these little bare spots, I'm okay with some bare spots, but I feel like some, I need a little bit of something. I don't know. So should I do some little cheesecloth bows? I don't know. I'm not usually a bow person. I think I could do some cheesecloth bows, though. I don't know. We'll see. You almost can't tell it's even a bow because it's kind of... I think that's oh that's cute that is so cute all right so let's kind of offset some of these I have one here this one's a little thick um, I need to trim it down if it's a little too chunky just trim it I would say rip it but it really it doesn't rip very well okay I think I need one over here I've got a little bare spot right here and this is also kind of works well. You can kind of use this to kind of hang on to some of your lights, too. You can twist it around your lights and tie it to the grapevine. So that is a good thing there. This one's a little thinner than the other one. Um, but I can spread out that cheesecloth like that. When you spread that cheesecloth out, you get a little more of a... I don't know. I want to say shabby, but it is shabby, but at the same time, it's still primitive looking and rustic. Vintage, all of the above. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to add one more and um, then we're going to decorate the top. All right. This is just a scrap of cheesecloth, you guys. I think I, think I kind of need one right here. Need one right there. Okay, so that'll kind of fill in that little empty spot right there. And spread out the cheesecloth so you can kind of see that it's a bow. It's a bow without being like super bowy. <laughs> I don't know. I like I said, I'm not usually a big bow person. Um, you could totally use some little uh, uh, fabric scraps and do the same thing, okay? Now, I, don't, I couldn't even see the top. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down lower. I'm going to slide this over, I think. Let's see if we can do that. My pupster is right under my feet here. I'll just push him right over out of the way. All right, so let's slide this down. And let me show you what we got from a top view. Hold on. My cord is twisted around my chair. Ah, all right. Let me replug that back in. There we go. Now you can kind of see what we got going on. Now we got this top part that is that is pretty bare. So we're going to doctor this up. We're going to doctor this up. I think we might need to add a little bit more cheesecloth around that top too. And then I have a metal, a primitive star that I want to put at the top. And I think, I think that'll finish this off. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what we needed. All right. Now that's not going to show a whole lot, but it'll kind of make it look like it's just continuing right on up there. I love that. I love the look. Okay, let me grab my star. Hang on. Oh, okay. Way over there. All right, this is just a metal star, you guys. Nothing fancy about this whatsoever. I usually keep it in my kitchen, but I think it found a new home tonight. We're going to put this at the top of our 
sticks here. So, like I said, we said that that top part wasn't going to really be seen. <laughs> you know, when I was putting that glue on and I said, you know, it, if it doesn't look pretty right now, that's okay, right? That's exactly what I mean. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take another piece of cheesecloth. You all know I love this stuff. You can find this in the canning section of your grocery store, you guys. That's where I usually find mine. I've had several of you um, message me and ask where to find it. That's where I get it. And it comes in a little bundle, and all I do is just take it out. I cut that a little too thin, you guys. Hold on. I'll use that for another project, but I need a thicker piece. Let's go like that. Um, and I just coffee stain it all in one batch and then have it for all of my projects. Now, I could hot glue this. I don't really think that's going to keep it there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this piece of coffee or cheesecloth, rather. I don't know why I said coffee. And I'm going to tie it around the star like so. We're going to see what that looks like. I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. We'll see. We'll see. If we don't, we can just untie it and try something different. Okay. I don't know. Do I like it? Do I like it? Do I not like it? I think for now, I like it. As I kind of sweat and dwell on it, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to like it long term or not. I wish it would sit up a little higher. Mm, okay, let's see. I need to kind of look at it from a distance, you guys. All right, now, let me show you. If you've still got some empty spots, that would be the perfect place that you could, of course, tuck in some pumpkins. Here's the other thing. We've got some fall picks. They've got fall picks at Hobby Lobby right now. You could take some of these, stick them in some of the empty areas like so, you know, and you've got yourself a nice little fall tree for not a whole lot. I'm just pulling these off of my hutch, you guys. I've got an empty spot down here. Tuck that in right there. I've got another one. This one has, oh, these are two stuck together. I could tuck these. Let me see. Where's another empty spot, you guys? Um, maybe down here. Let's tuck this one down here. I'm going to have to get me some more fall picks. <laughs> those are perfect. So you can see how if you've got little empty spots, just take one of those little um, picks and stuff it right in there. I love that. I love the cheesecloth because it's neutral. Um, and you can just take this off and change it out for the seasons. So I used one, two, three, four picks and two of the little pit berry garlands. And look what we did. Look what we did. It's so cute. So cute. And so we don't have to worry about having a bucket or anything to set this in. It already kind of has a style of its own. Kind of already has a style of its own. I hope that you guys have loved it. Loved it. Left middle. We need something in the left middle. Right here. I, uh, we need something right there. I don't think I have any more. Um, I don't have any more. Um, what am I trying to say? Little picks handy where I can grab them or they're all across the other side of the room. I could add another little bow right there. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yes, a little ribbon garland would be cute wrapped on here if you had something like that. Ah, I cut that a little too short, you guys. <laughs> oh well, we meant well right there, but after we sign off, I will tuck in something else right there. I think we need something right there for sure. Um, we need a little bit more greenery right there, I think. I think that's what we need, a little bit more greenery. Uh, thank you all so much for coming by tonight and hanging out with me. Through all the craziness, through all the reconnections that we had tonight, we did something a little bit different um, tonight. So, using something that was vintage, which were our family tobacco sticks, um, and I'm looking at this and that star looks ginormous because I think it's because my camera is like angled down so it makes the top look really big. I promise it doesn't look that out of proportion in real life. 
<laughs> so anyway, thank you all so much uh, for joining me tonight. We have some amazing projects heading your way this weekend. I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. We start at 7 a.m. in the morning with Pat from Unique. Uh, she's kicking us off, she's all the way in Canada. Um, and then I will be back at 7.30 in the morning for another fun project. All Much shorter projects tomorrow, uh, all 30 minutes. So uh, be ready to be inspired and just have a wonderful time. I love you all so much. Thank you for being here tonight. And I can't wait to see you in the comments tomorrow of all the live videos that you'll see. Make sure that you're part of the All Things Vintage and Thrifted Facebook group so that you can watch the entire event, you guys. I will talk to you soon. Take care and have a wonderful night.